Honestly, ladies and gents, if you're coming on to here to see me shout and rant and just get fucking angry about what I've just seen, then you're on the wrong channel. Um, I genuinely, for the life of me, do not know what to think about my football club anymore. Manchester United there, we've lost against Brentford two, sorry, Brentford today 4-0 and Brighton 2-1 on the first day of the season. Two first games of Ten Hag, two losses. Manchester United currently bottom of the Premier League. We've lost our last six away games in a row. And you think you can't get any lower than last season. And the first game happens against Brighton. You think you can't get any lower than that game against Brighton. Then you go and play Brentford away and you get fucking steamrolled. 4-0. Three comical goals. David De Gea. Wow. For both of those goals. The first one, an absolute calamity of an error. The second one... Why are you giving the ball to Ericsson in that situation? He's never going to come out of that with a ball. The third, a comical, comical set-piece goal. And it's just going to now start getting people to talk about Ten Hag. Start getting people to talk about the problems at the club. Mm, maybe the players aren't right. Of course the players aren't fucking right. The manager is right. And it's about time. Like, I, I, Gary Neville in that game... At some point, he started talking about Lissandro Martinez. Ah, oh, mm, he shouldn't have played because of his height there. It, let's please stop it. Stop it. For years and years and years and years, Jesus Christ, what is it? 17 years now from before the Glazers took over the club to now. They've been a problem. Fergie was the genius who managed to navigate his way through that despite what they were doing and the ambition that they were sapping, draining out of the club until they bled us dry. What you're seeing now is a consequence of that. Ten Hag, I effectively, I feel like Ten Hag, you know the full Monty, just a bunch of uh, dudes who can't, they're not fucking strippers. And they're trying to, they're trying to, they have no idea what they're doing. They're the, that's like Manchester United's squad for Eric Ten Hag. He's got his system and the way of playing and we are giving him drunks, addicts, nobody who has any idea really how to play that system. And you're seeing the consequence of it. Is, turn, is Ten Hag learning? Yes. Is he, has he probably been blown away by the quality of every team in the Premier League? Would he have expected this sort of level of performance from your Brightons and your Brentfords? I don't think he would have. But we knew that was going to happen. It happens to Every single manager who has to adjust to the Premier League. But he's adjusting with broken vehicles, with cars, with smashed in windscreens, flat tyres, punches, no engine under the bonnet. All those players again today. Fucking Jesus. And I, I apologise for us if I'm swearing. I've been in Glasgow for a few days. You can see it's not the same studio. I came up for a wedding. And that's try. That's put a proper downer. Fucking hell, it's put a proper downer on my night. My words, and it's put a proper... Honestly, at this point, I don't know what I can say anymore that hasn't already been said. And it's almost like the actual problem at the club hasn't been fucking resolved. Because it has not been resolved. It has not changed. The ultimate problem is the fact that the Glazers and their business model previously was getting Manchester United into that top four... And using that as the cash cow. That was the, the, the cycle that we just perf we perfected under Fergie. We never finished outside the top three under Fergie. And then when after he left and they had to start investing again. And whenever we finished outside the top four, the investment went up. But now, when you look at the quality of the teams like Brighton and Brentford, the scale of the investment required at Manchester United to get to that top four is way outside of the budgets that the Glazers want to put on the club. And it's not just about spending. As Gary Neville did say correctly in that game, it's impressive that Manchester United have been able to spend a billion and look this bad. But that's what happens when you give an addict your credit card. Do you expect that addict to go out and pay your electricity bill? To go out and get food in the fridge first? Hell no, they're going to go out and get their fixed. They're not going to think about the actual things that you need in the long term. They're going to go out and get what they want right now. Oh shit, that's not what you needed. Ah, oh, that's, that's caused problems. Lo and behold, you're witnessing the manifestation of years of mismanagement, of everything going wrong at Manchester United. And I'm so tired. I do not thrive well in this environment. I'm not somebody who loves negativity. I'm, love, I'm somebody who likes seeing my goddamn football club heading in the right direction. And then we go and do that against Brentford. And I don't look. 
I could spend five minutes now talking about individuals, poor mistakes, tactical errors, but it's besides the fucking point. It is not where the focus needs to be. It is, not, it is an issue, but it's not the root cause. It is a consequence of what's happening above that. Ten Hag shouldn't have the players that he has. Ten Hag should have more. In a summer where we needed major reinvestment, and that was before the likes of Papa Cavani, Mata, Matic and Lingard left on free transfers. It's like over 200 million worth of, you know, they didn't fit United, but they were good players. And they've been replaced by Martinez, Malasia and Eriksen. We don't have the tools that Ten Hag needs. And I'm utterly convinced. And this is the, this is the thing that I'm going to really struggle with now. <sighs> because there's going to be energy against Ten Hag. It might not come from United fans, but those the, the media is going to jump on it and they are going to thrive on it. They're going to th shove it in all the headlines. They're going to try and drag him down and make him sink into quicksand as quickly as possible. Manchester United have been in a boom-bust cycle for a long... I mean, football technically is a boom-bust cycle. You have your ups, you have your downs, of course. But these four storms at Manchester United, the cycle of it has become... Smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to the point now where there is no boom anymore. We're just in bust. And that really has, in, has not infected the minds of the players, but it's taken over the minds of the players and they've been absorbed by it. And I don't think the players have the capability of getting themselves out of it. I think the manager does, but they're in such a cycle that we can only spin downwards. And we've got fucking Liverpool Old Trafford next. And we had such a positive pre-season. That's the thing I'm, I think I'm struggling with. I'm not talking about the results. I'm talking about day-to-day -day training, the videos we looked at, the reaction we saw from the players, the comments from the players, the improvements in the drills, the improvements in the performance. Everything seemed to be in sync, apart from Ronaldo and the questions that that asked around the squad. But to see us go from that, so what we did in that first game against Brighton and what we've done there against Brentford goes to show me that it really is, these players are scared to wear the shirt now. They are being swallowed up by the pressures of Manchester United. And I don't really see how they come out the other side of it. Honestly, I don't. So many of them, I mean, it's, it, this isn't, again, this is not a knee-jerk reaction to one individual game. And I hate being the idea that I'm spreading sort of Knee-jerk reactions, but it's as I said, I can't get angry at individual, apart from De Gea in that game, maybe. I can't get angry. There's no point me getting angry at individuals anymore. There really isn't. There's no point getting angry about Manasseh not starting instead of Shaw or tactical things that may have changed it or subs that could have come on earlier in the game. The problem is, and the problem always has been, the Glazers at Manchester United and how the difference in their ambition compares to what the fans and everybody else wants for the club. And it's like two magnets going against each other, pushing away, not working together. The thing I really feel and hope is that right now, there's more momentum behind getting the Glazers out than there ever has been. Manchester United as, a, as an institution has lost so much of its value. It feels like something could happen. And I hope that we can organise some sort of, whether it's a boycott for the Liverpool game, there has to be more energy behind it because people, don't start fucking questioning Ten Hag now. Don't start feeding anybody that's going to do energy behind that. You can slam the players if you want. The majority of them were there last season, the season before, and they're just doing more of their bullshit. But Ten Hag will not be able to turn this club around until you start replacing his 47-year-old rusty saw with a new drill. He needs the tools to make his system work. Right now, wow, Manchester United, man. 4-0 against Brentford, 2-1 against Brighton. First two games of the season. Of course, there were mistakes from Ten Hag. I'm not saying he's guilt-free in this situation. But I implore you here now, don't put your energy into that part. It's not where it needs to be. Even if things could have changed and we would have improved in these two first games, what you're seeing is the manifestation of a mismanaged and negligently mismanaged football club for such a long time that we don't know who we are anymore. Apart from the laughing stock of the Premier League and 
everybody else, they're enjoying it.